Um, well, my name's Wendy Fenton, and I'm the Humanitarian Practice Network Coordinator with the Humanitarian Policy Group here at ODI, and I'll be chairing today's session. Um, first of all, I'd like to extend a warm welcome to all of you, both those who are in the room and to the more than 100 people who have signed up to participate in the session online. Um, first, I'd like to go through a, a tiny bit of housekeeping. If you could please put your phones on silent. I won't ask you to turn them off in case you decide that you want to, to tweet. Um, and if you do want to tweet, the hashtag is the hashtag mark, protection2013. Um, if you do hear a fire alarm, please exit the room through either of these doors. Go right and go out <laughs> through the, the main exit to the building. And I think that's all on the housekeeping front. So let's move on to the substance, to why we're actually here today. And we're here today to talk about the monitoring and evaluation of protection work. And in today's armed conflicts, as we know, civilians bear the brunt of hostilities, and they're also increasingly the direct targets of violence. And humanitarian agencies, while they strive to provide in some cases or to enhance protection in others, um, the question we're asking here is how can they better monitor and evaluate protection programming to ensure that they best serve those in need? And at today's event, which is co-hosted by the International Committee of the Red Cross and the Humanitarian Policy Group, we'll be discussing the challenges of monitoring and evaluating protection work and how these are being or how they might be addressed. And the impetus for this discussion is the newly revised professional standards for protection work. And I think you've all got copies on your, you've all got copies on your chairs. This is for the benefit of the online audience. <laughs> um, and this, uh, I mean, the original version of this, I think, was published in 2009. But these standards, um, they set minimum standards for humanitarian and human rights actors who engage in protection work in armed conflict and other situations of violence. And I think importantly, the revised standards contain a new chapter on lessons learned on the management of protection strategies uh, with a particular focus on defining smart objectives and monitoring and evaluating results. So I'd like you to note that today's gathering is one of a series of events linked to the revised standards, including the initial launch of the standards, which was held in Geneva in April, and a subsequent launch event that was held in May in Washington, D.C., and that was hosted by the United States Institute of Peace, Interaction, and the ICRC. And there are other events that are planned to be held in Dakar, Nairobi, and the Middle East, amongst other locations. So we're delighted to have with us today an impressive panel of speakers who have a wide range of, prote of both protection as well as M&E experience, and they're going to highlight examples and lessons learned from both field experience and research. And I'd like to uh, start off by introducing them now. So our first speaker, who's on my left, is Nora Nyland, who I'm sure many of you know. Nora is a research associate at the Center on Conflict Development and Peacebuilding at the Graduate Institute of International and Development Studies in Geneva. And she's worked extensively on humanitarian and human rights issues in a range of crisis settings, including Sri Lanka, Cambodia, Liberia, and Afghanistan. Her previous roles include Director of Human Rights in UNAMA, the United Nations Assistance Mission in Afghanistan. And Nora's presentation, Nora is going to focus on uh, contemporary crises and some of the, the issues there, drawing in particular on Sri Lanka. Um, but before I hand over to Nora, who's our only presenter today, the rest of our panel are actually going to respond to, to questions. We're going to try to have a bit of a discussion uh, panel set up here. I'd like to introduce the rest of them. So on my far right is Rachel Hasty, who is a protection advisor at Oxfam, where she leads Oxfam's strategy, program strategy for protection work. And she's worked with Oxfam GB for 16 years in field and headquarter posts, implementing and supporting humanitarian programs. And on my far left is uh, Guillaume Ravier, who is the head of the Protection of the Civilian Population Unit at the ICRC. And he's worked with ICRC since 2000 and has held an extensive number of protection roles in a range of contexts, including Colombia, which is the most recent one, I believe, Iraq, Indonesia, and Guinea. And then on my immediate right is Francesco Benino, who is a research officer at ALNAP, where she focuses on evaluation, learning, and accountability. And before Francesca joined ALNAP, she worked for the UN, uh, for OCHA, actually, on issues related to the leadership strengthening agenda. 
and previously on evaluation. She's also had previous roles with ECHO, the Interagency Standing Committee, and the Feinstein International Center. And last but not least is Jenny McAvoy, who is joining us by telephone. Jenny, are you there? Uh, hi, Wendy, I'm here. Great, thank you. I'm sorry that you can't see Jenny and that we can't, uh, well, that we can't see you, but, and you can't see us either, I guess, unless you've got us on computer. <laughs> but Jenny is the Director of Protection at Interaction, and, she'll, and she's joining us, as you can see, by telephone. And her previous work includes four years with OCHA's Protection Displacement Section and field operations with various local, national, and international NGOs. And notably, she served as Oxfam GB's first humanitarian protection advisor, where she pioneered Oxfam's work on the protection of civilians in armed conflict. So that's our distinguished panel today. And without further ado, I would like to hand over to Nora. <laughs> 